and the Just Guys Tendency plus Treasure Cruise will be enough. He's playing, you know, we see Lightning Bolt, Force of Will, Spell Pierce. These are all cards in his deck to supplement the Ascendancy plan. These are upgrades over the things like, say, is it Charm that the modern iterations of the deck right. have to play? I mean, we saw sometimes people playing Lotus Petal, for example, with Just Guys Tendency, which on the surface, to be honest, looks really good. We are underway quickly here, though. Brad winning the Dyro, Hilja Taxi and Probe on turn one, then main phase Brainstorm. Checking and the notepad here, see what he wrote down. I didn't get a great look at Sheldon's hand there. One thing about this Jeskai Ascendancy combo deck is that it has to find the Ascendancy in order to combo off. Fortunately for the deck, it does have Brainstorm, Thought Scour. That's a particularly good card with Ascendancy and Treasure Cruise. Uh, Mental Note, along with copy, a copy of four copies of Treasure Cruise and one Faithless Looting in order to find it. Yep, and you get to do some of the Brainstorm Shuffle shenanigans with the self-milling effects as well. Yeah, a lot of this deck, to me, would be based around the sequencing of cantrips being very important. And young Pyroman, your Monster Swift Spear, the turn one play for Sheldon. He'll catch the taxi probe, and now he gets to see what Brad's up to. Brad has hidden some of the best information in his hand, though. You see Thought Scour, Brainstorm, Spell Pierce, Young Pyromancer, Brainstorm, and another, looks like another Spell Pierce. This could be a lot of decks. I guess Thought Scour is the only odd duck in here. So. There's two possibilities. One is Brad has hid the goods on top of the deck. The other is he has put away his two horse cards with the intent of thought scouring them away on his upkeep. So uh, a couple different lines of play available to Brad. Yeah, no second land in Brad's hand just yet. And the Swift Spear will swing for two. Brad will drop to 16 and will pass back. And you're absolutely right. Upkeep, Brad's going to thought scour himself. And that will mill Young Pyromancer and Fate Stitcher off the top. Draws for turn, that's a Lightning Bolt. Draws, or draws a Thought Scour, rather. That's Lightning Bolt. Draws for turn is Arid Mesa. And that was great. I mean, Sheldon did have the option to daze, wants to save it for something else. But being able to put a Fate Stitcher into the graveyard and draw land number two is a huge win there for Brad. Second Monastery Swift Spear into play for Sheldon. These are some of the better draws out of this style deck. He's going to brainstorm. That will pump both. Swift Spears. Brad, as we saw, full up on Spell Pierce. Probably won't let this one happen. It's also possibly a Lightning Bolt in response. Yeah. Pierce and Bolt, both possibilities here. He'll go with Pierce on the Brainstorm. Sheldon can daze, and he will. So he'll get to resolve the Brainstorm and his, currently his Swift Spears, both with double pumps. This is going to be six damage screaming across. And I think Sheldon may have just picked up a Gitaxium Probe as well, so he can push it even harder. These, some draws out of this blue red Delver deck can just be ridiculous with Monastery Swift Spear. Yeah, the Swift Spear, quite an upgrade over the Goblin Guide slot that this deck used to have to go to. This guy almost always swings for two, often a lot more. And yeah, you see there, we'll, we'll see if he picked up a Gitaxium Probe as well. And that'll be a swing for six. Brad down to nine. This is the terrifying part. This is turn two. Yep. And it's not like Sheldon has tried to do nothing but bolt Brad's face. He's oh. cantripping and, and finding d defense. Treasure Cruise the draw for Brad. And you know, a card like Thought, Scour Thought Scour is such a steroid for Treasure Cruise. Brad already with seven cards in the yard. Yep. <laughs> now he's going to exile them all. He a little bit of a downside. He did have to get rid of his Fate Stitcher in order to do this. But really, I don't think you really need the Fate Stitcher until it's combo time. Exactly. Once, once Brad has a Sensi in play, it's incidental for him to find a, another one. Force of Will pitching blue card from Sheldon. And Brad will counter back with Spell Pierce. Sheldon with an, a forked bolt and a modest... He may just have Brad dead on turn three. This is disgusting. Brad draws three, but he does not hit a land. And we'll see if Brad even gets to play another turn this game. Third Monastery Swift Spear, a swing for three. Brad's down to six. And if that island was a volcanic, that would have been a lethal turn. Yep. The fourth bolt would have gotten it done. And it may just be too much too fast. Or rather would have knocked Brad down to one at least.
brainstorm from Brad Nelson. It's interesting to see Jeskai Ascendancy in Legacy. I It certainly is a powerful enough card for the format. I think one of the dangers so far has been with all these cards like main deck Pyroblasts running around, a three mana enchantment that just happens to be blue is kind of a liability. The, what's nice about this deck is you get to be pure engine. Compared to something like Omnitel, where you get to play these omnisciences and these show and tells, these dream halls, all those come at the expense of the cantrips you can load up in your deck. This deck is almost pure engine. The Young Pyromancers are cards you're happy to draw too, so it's really only the Fate Stitchers that are the cost for playing this deck. The rest of this gets to be disruption, cantrips, removal, whatever. So it's, it's packed with action. A lot of these other decks don't get to do that because, you know, Show and Tell, for example, the Sneak and Show deck has 16 slots accounted for in Sneak Attack, Show and Tell, Crystal Brand, and Emeril This is running a lot leaner on those kind of slots. See Jeskai Ascendancy combo here. He is running the one of Fairy Conclave. That's straight out of the modern playbook. Land three, it'll be Young Pyromancer from Brad. And the forked bolt in Sheldon's hand should do it here. Pump the team, kill the blocker, and that will be six if all if all all works here. It's forked bolt. Brad can force of will it, and he'll have to. He'll go to five. If Sheldon has another spell, it won't matter. And Brad would have to have another force of will to be able to get out of it. Looks like a treasure cruise remaining in Sheldon's hand. He, is, he does have the mana to do it, if that's indeed the card. But I think that Brad may have another force of will in hand, in which case he goes to four from forcing. The Swiss Spears are three power, so he gets two chump blocks, falling to one. But after that, he can start cantripping and generating enough chump blockers yeah. to, that this is not a done deal. Second treasure cruise here for Sheldon. That's his whole hand. Brad's expending a ton of resources for this counter fight. Four of his own cards for two of Sheldon's, but he's going to have to do it. It's another force. This one pitching Brainstorm gets another elemental token. Three, three fours swinging in. Brad's going to chump two of them. He'll go to one. And uh, can he win off one? We'll see. One of the cards in, hand, in Brad's hand is Lightning Bolt, which is great. Upkeep, Brad will. Thought Scour himself. He doesn't like the top card. He knows it's Fairy Conclave. Fairy Conclave and Fate Stitcher into the yard. I believe Brad drawing a fetch land. That won't be any help. Can't crack that one when he's at one life. Can he survive is the next question. Looks like he has a lightning bolt. That'll start. If he can. It, all it takes is one treasure cruise, really. And then Brad is. Will there be some life? breathed into his game here. Well, Sheldon misses some draws. You know, I, I think Brad's hand is two bolts right now. I mean, that takes care of the of the two of the Swiss Spears. And then the Swiss Spear can't attack into the three tokens. Right. And then it's draw step to draw step. Uh, you know, Brad's at one, so a lot of things can go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's not safe. His pet, like that Arid Mason in his hand is, is not really a card. He'll swing with the young Pyromancer. Go over to Sheldon's side. He gets a draw for the turn. We'll see. Don't get a chance to look to see what it is. Sheldon's going to try to swing for lethal. We'll start with a lightning bolt on a Monastery Swift Spear. Brad waiting to do this on Sheldon's turn because he wants to ambush the third Swift Spear. Trying to get it all, yeah. That's going to kill it. Another lightning bolt will kill another Swift Spear. Sheldon has an instant of his own. It's a daze. He'll cast it just to pump his creatures. That does... Swift Spear will still die, however. Well, Brad can't pay for a daze right now, so that actually just oh. works. Oh, Brad doesn't have... Right, he... he has, doesn't have another land. That's actually just a counter. It was one of the risks with Brad's lines of play there was exactly that. Which means Brad has to just double chump block. He doesn't get to do any ambushing there. And Jeskai Ascendancy, the draw for Brad. So he, we know he's got a Fate Stitcher in the yard. So if he gets out of this turn and he can chump block. Maybe he can combo out. <laughs> it's, oh boy, is that going to be a hard one. Brad, the double chump block. Both guys don't die. One of those Swiss Spears gets to stay alive, and that's you know, that's a lethal attacker right there. Delver of Secrets for Sheldon. All right. Here we go. How Rub good. your hands. This is this would be the turn. <laughs> if it's a land, Brad's out of luck. It's going to need to be a spell if he wants to start. So we'll see this. Let's see this one in action. Starts by unearthing a Fate Stitcher. Fate Stitcher untaps. 
of Volcanic Island. Brad will start. And this is, is this treasure? No, it's just taxiing, but I was asking if it was treasure cruise. He has to pay for the probe, but there's one pump right now on Just Guy Sensi. He'll loot. Loots away land to draw a card. He needs it to be a good one. It's another land, Ooh. and we are on to game two. That could, I mean, that was it's almost. It's not that far. That was almost enough. If he finds a cantrip there in the top two cards, I think Brad might be able to just win that turn. If he finds a treasure cruise there, he does win, for example. Yeah, because that Fate Stitcher is growing. It's eligible to attack. So all he needs to do is spin his tires for long enough to find a lightning bolt or another removal spell for the untapped Delver of Secrets, and that's lethal. I so, mean, it, he almost went off from, that's no base. That's that's nothing going on. It's just Just Guy Ascendancy. So for those of you unfamiliar with the combo, this one plays out a lot like the modern combo deck, or if you know the standard one with mana creatures, it's a similar thing. So Fate Stitcher taps to untap a permanent, and in this case, it's going to almost always be a land. So what that does is it makes all of Brad's spells cost one less. So if it's a one mass spell, it'll cost zero. If it's a zero mass spell, Spell, Brad will actually make a mana doing it. So what he does is he uses the Fate Stitcher to cast all these normal one mana cantrips for free. He goes through his deck. Every time he loots, he'll loot lands away. So he'll just keep drawing spells into spells. Eventually, he'll get a treasure crew, so he'll start netting some cards. But the real goal of all of this is that every time he does this, his Fate Stitcher gets one bigger until it grows up large enough to be lethal. And Brad will, with any luck, push lethal damage through. What he as he keeps going, he gets more. He'll start discarding extra copies of Fate Stitcher, and then on the untaps, Fate Stitcher doesn't just untap lands; it can tap things. He'll use the extra Fate Stitchers to tap Sheldon's blockers, so that that one lethal Fate Stitcher can get through. And with the Cataxian probes in the deck, those net mana in that scenario. So exactly. What you're describing is not too hard to engineer. It sounds like a lot, but once you have a Sensi in play plus a Fate Stitcher, you're on easy mode. There's also one copy of Fairy Conclave in Brad's deck, which looks a little bit weird, but that's an invasive blocker that you can animate, generate a bunch of spells, Ascendancy pl pumps plus one plus one each time, and then that's a lethal attacker as well. All right, so I'm going to look at Brad's sideboard here. This is a fairly new deck. A lot of usual suspects of cards that you can see in here. One thing he has, he has Pyroblasts, Hydroblasts, and uh, those are all in the deck. I imagine he wants all of those in the matchup. Other things I'm not sure he's too interested in. Meddling Mage, fair, Extra Fairy Conclaves, those ones are pretty take it or leave it. I imagine those are for combo matchups or, or, you know, he needs to be addressing specific permanents because things like, you know, Aether Sworn Candidate, things like Spirit of the Labyrinth, those are problematic. So I think those kind of specific cards, you really don't want to bring in for troublesome, troublesome permanents like that. The Pyroblast and the Hydroblast seem very good though. It's just going to help him push through his combo. On Sheldon's side, there's two Gravedigger's Cages, a Blood Moon, two Power Blast, two Fluster Storm, a Smash Smithereens, an Electricery, two Pithy Needle, an Echoing Truth, two copies of Price of Progress, and a Grim Lava Mancer. Not really a lot for this matchup. I would say that the two copies of Power Blast and the two Fluster Storms are pretty easy to bring in. And I think the Echoing Truth is fine here. Yeah, one thing of note, Brad's deck actually is a zero basic land deck. So Sheldon may or may not know this, he'd have to be guessing, but it is a matchup where Price of Progress and especially Blood Moon are options. With a Blood Moon on the table, I don't think Brad can win through one, even with the help of Jeskai Ascendancy. Yes, it seems very hard. I'm, I'm trying to think about the way to, to go off through this. And He has young Pyromancers in the deck. Sure. He would have to aggro. And we are underway. Game two, Brad back on the play. He's down a game. Was not able to Jeskai combo Sheldon in standard. Can he do it in legacy? So far, the answer is no. Remember, the winner of this rematch of the morning's finals will be in our top eight for the evening tournament as well. Will be a double top eight for that player. Sheldon going for the double win this weekend. At 6-0, and off to a great start. Uh, be very impressive to do, especially since with the upcoming changes to the Open Series. It's not going to be uh, possible anymore, at least in 2015. This may, may be the last chance we see for someone to match Jerry's record. Yeah. Had to be the, uh, the the invitational next weekend. Could have one, yeah. But, and it's, it's only once every couple months that this opportunity even comes along, that you see the uh, standard open winner, one, play the Legacy Open, and two, do this well at it. Tyler Wilkerson and Ross Merriam were the two memorable people who almost got it done. It's going to be a Delver of Secrets for Sheldon. Brad on turn two, he has Young Pyromancer. This is the other half of the Ascendancy combo. It's not enough just to play Ascendancy.
And we pass back over to Sheldon. You see multiple pyroblasts in his hand. He is ready to fight over Jeskai Ascendancy. But if Brad makes the game about Young Pyromancer instead, that might not matter. Sheldon will swing, willing to offer the trade with the Pyromancer. Will Brad take it? If you're Sheldon, you want this trade to happen pretty badly. It, and good on Sheldon to make it to make it so. It does not seem like Sheldon's hands really set up to beat Young Pyromancer right now. I see a lot of red blasts, but no lightning bolts. Right. So uh, that's a card he's got to be really scared of. And on Brad's side of the table, his young Pyromancer doesn't defend himself uh, uh, against that Delver if it flips. So that's also Brad's only opportunity to get to make that trade, or maybe his only opportunity. One Delver of Seekers from Sheldon, wondering if he'll play the second one. You actually don't have to worry about the Ascendancy deck on turn three winning. It's not, I don't believe it is possible for them to do. I'm trying to think. It's. They it don't does have not a way seem... to make mana. They, yeah. yeah. Not unless they have a creature in play, which a Fate Stitcher or a Conclave. So Brad will just play plays another Pyromancer. Fetchland passes. Sheldon, he flips his Delver of Secrets into Insectile Aberration. Plays third land of his own. And he wants to keep these, this board clean. It's going to be Lightning Bolt down on the young Pyromancer. Sheldon's confident right now he can win the fight over blue cards, so it's just containing the red stuff. Sheldon's hand's very good right now for this matchup. He has a perfect mix of counter magic, removal, and Delver of Secrets. Down goes the Pyromancer. In comes the Delver. Three damage, knocking Brad to 15. You see the remaining hand for Sheldon is Pyroblast. Pyroblast, Monastery Swift Spear. And Sheldon using this opportunity to crack his own fetch line in case Brett has Stifle. And that shows these some uncertainty on Sheldon's side, how he's not... He hasn't played against this deck. He doesn't know if Brad runs Stifle. It would seem unusual, but not impossible. There's still, there's still very little harm in doing it right now. Sheldon's hand without a cantrip. Yes, he could draw one, but... Yeah, I guess if he draws Brainstorm, that would be the downside. The problem is that if that land gets... Let's imagine that land does get Stifle, then your shield's down. Exactly. And that looks like a pretty silly way to, to lose. So I don't mind Sheldon cracking the fetch line here, even though uh, Brad's deck does not have the look of someone who would be playing with something like Stifle. Yeah, what Brad would love to find here would be a copy of Lightning Bolt for himself. If he can get this Delver off the table, it'll be, that'll buy him a lot of turns. So you can, he's going to go looking here. Starts with a Brainstorm. Drawing three. Brad with a large number of cards in his hand, so he has a lot of control over his draws right now. And actually, this, I do believe this could be a turn three deck if you unearth Fate Stitcher, untap a land, Ascendancy, probe, run. You're right. Okay, yeah. You're so absolutely it's, right. It's tough to, it's tough to, to so put that all you, together. It but. wouldn't sneak up on you, though, because there'd have to be a Stitcher in the yard when they started the turn. Yeah. So if, if you're passing the turn to Brad and he doesn't have a Stitcher in the yard and he only has two lands in play, he's not going to untap and win. Yeah, he has to... He has to you know, would have to mill over one of a Fate Stitcher at the end of his own, at the end of yeah. your turn, and then... So I guess it. if he has untapped mana onto, then in theory you'd have to be careful of that? Yeah. Go back over. It's going to be Treasure Cruise from Brad. Sheldon's going to try to Pyroblast. Brad will Spell Pierce, and he gets three cards. And as you see Jeskai Ascendancy do in, in Modern, as we saw in Standard, Brad is transforming here into this control deck right now. Removal, counter spells, treasure cruises. Eventually he'll win with a combo, but the primary concern is to just remove Sheldon's creatures and outcard him. But Delver continues to come in. It knocks Brad down to 10. Now it's young Pyromancer. Brad will Hydroblast it. Two Hydroblasts and one Pyroblast in the sideboard. The problem here is that, you know, for all the good that Brad's doing and drawing a bunch of cards, he's still looking at a two turn clock now with this young Pyromancer in play. Although we saw him last game go off from a pretty low base. This would be a window for him to sneak in Ascendancy. Yep. Sheldon using his second Pyroblast there to take care of the Hydroblast. Wants Brad on a two-turn clock. Brad is going to start with Jataxian Probe, it looks like. He wants to know what he's up against. It's a Lightning Bolt and a Monastery Swift Spear. That's pretty scary right now. Well, that is... It's, that's another five points of damage. That's, yeah, that's lethal. That's lethal.
Doesn't have, doesn't look to have ascendancy just yet. Just gonna use the white mana. He'll start. Let's see here with a brainstorm. He's gonna need to find some removal. Don't think he can combo this turn anymore. Lightning Bolt was among his draws. That's gonna be a good one. You see another Jataxian probe. And he does get to engineer a little bit of a shuffle here. He can put back two bad cards. He can Thought Scour himself, bolt something, and clean out some of his deck. He's not playing against a Counterspell in hand right now, so if he can get out of this turn, he gets an opportunity to start drawing cards again next turn, maybe finding an Ascendancy and being able to go. And do just that. Thought Scar himself gets rid of the Fate Stitcher and the Flooded Strand. So now he has a Stitcher in the yard. That's part of the combo. Well, he gets to, I, I would imagine, use Lightning Bolt now on most likely the Insect Dial Aberration. And then next turn, he has some cantrips, no ascendancy, but if he's able to draw it either for his draw step or find it probably within the first cantrip, he may have a shot to go off. Tundra for the turn. And looks like it's going to be Lightning Bolt. He doesn't have too many cards, though. Fairy Conclave, one of the cards in his hand. That one, no help at all. That's discard fodder for the Ascendancy he hasn't drawn yet. And you're, you're right. He's going to take down Insectile Aberration. And he's going to cast Mental Note. Draw two, discard two. Or it's, I'm sorry, mill two, draw a card. Apologies. And there is yeah. a treasure cruise. That could be lethal. Monastery Swift Spear. Here comes treasure cruise from Shelton. He has seven in the yard. <laughs> Brad's looking at this. Is he going to, is he going to die from here? Another Monastery Swift Spear. So that's four points of damage in play. He has access to another Swift Spear is five, the Gataxian Probe is six, seven. Two swift. And if he finds a, a mana now to cast the bolt in his hand, he just kills him. <laughs> so he's dead, dead to a land here. Brad's hand is Probe, land, land. That's not even very much of a winner here. Young Pyromancer. Oh, there's another, another Probe. Pro and <laughs> Sheldon has, the, has lethal anyway, it looks like. Isn't, no, yes. One, two, I, three, I think he needs, still needs four, a land. five, yep, six, and there's the... the land, and that'll do it. Lightning Bolt will be online, and Sheldon Frerickson once again, 2-0, takes down Brad Nelson for the second time today and makes it to our top eight. He is three wins away from the double championship. Blue Red Delver still doing its thing, and uh, I think a problem for the SNC deck, now Brad 6-0 and still could potentially make the top eight here with a win next round in a position to draw. Because a lot of these Delver decks are moving to a Hydroblast Pyroblast configuration in their sideboard. <laughs> and they both hit Jeskai Ascendancy. They, the, both of those cards are really good against the Ascendancy combo deck. Both against the card Ascendancy itself, and then against, you know, Lightning Bolts to protect your creatures. Hydroblast is very good there. And then, of course, all the cantrips. Pyroblast pulls a lot of weight. Yeah. So with that, Sheldon at 7-0, Brad at 6-1. We're going to move over.